We're here today to talk about lead conversion for real estate professionals. And right now in your chat area, I've just sent you links, which you might have gotten last night via email, to an ebook and a worksheet that are kind of companions to our webinar today. If you could help me out before we get started by just telling you that you can see my screen okay and that you can hear me okay, so I'm not talking to myself only. Okay, thanks Roxanne, that's great, I'm glad you guys, awesome. Okay, so continuing on, people are just coming on, welcome to those that are coming on the line, again, in your chat area, if you didn't get the worksheet and the ebook and are interested in downloading those, you've got the links right there. And for those of you that are going to watch this later as a recorded webinar, um, you will see those projecting at the bottom of your screen so you can download those. So I've got some really great surefire lead conversion techniques for real estate professionals and we're going to talk about those for the next 45 minutes. This is a companion to the webinar we did two weeks ago which was about lead generation. So a couple of things we'll be referring back to that one. So if you didn't see that one you'll be able to watch that online at melissazavala.com and there's also a worksheet for that one as well. So welcome to all of you I'm excited to talk about this um, it, it you know lead conversion does work it's all about discipline and we're going to talk about that as well so what is a lead what is your definition of a lead and when I talk about leads I'm talking about online leads now how would you define an online lead so if you can talk to me and let me know what you think an online lead is um, and what your definition is, that would be really, really great. Okay, Susan's saying it's someone that goes to my website. Yes, that's true, but there's more. Let's see who else can write in and give me some more um, definitions of an online lead. Let's see who's on. Thanks again to those that are just coming on the line. Okay, someone else says, yes, it's someone that goes on your website and puts in their name. That's exactly right. A lead is a person who shows interest and provides his or her contact information to you. So when we're talking about online leads, it's not only someone that goes on your website, but right, shows interest and provides his or her contact information. And Jane says, asks a question about a property they see online. Yeah, that's actually how you can validate them. You know that they're really interested in a property. So thanks, Jane, for supporting me with that. Um, on your worksheet, anything that's in light blue here, you can write it in on your worksheet if you're interested in doing that. So that's why some of our text is in light blue. So a lead, an online lead, is a person who shows interest and provides his or her contact information. And that is key because if they don't give you the information, obviously it's kind of useless that they're going on your website. So wherever you are on the internet, you want to make sure that you have the two-way two street, the open lines of communication, so that people can, um, you can collect their information so that you can make, um, provide value and uh, provide them with whatever they need and hopefully convert them into a listing or a sale. To, so to, to generate leads, and this is what we talked about a few weeks ago, and there I recognize some names that were on the call uh, a few weeks ago, you need to master the art of diversification online. Now we talked about diversification for, um, in all of our marketing and lead generation a few weeks ago, but this is just online. So it helps to be everywhere online. And that's kind of tricky because we all don't have time to be everywhere all the time. But if you were to go on Google right now, and put in your name, you know, or put in your name plus realtor or real estate agent or real estate Los Angeles or whatever. What shows up? Where are you online? So as a good test, if you if you want to walk away from this page and do that right now, whatever shows up on page one is an indicator of your online presence. So for me, when I put in my name, which is not that common, Melissa Zavala, I don't have too much competition on that name. And I do show up a lot on page one for different things, my website, my Facebook page, my LinkedIn profile, maybe if I've done a video or two, all sorts of different things show up. So the question is, um, how diversified are you? Where are you online? So you can evaluate that yourself by just Googling your name. And if you have a common name, make sure to put real estate, real estate professional, real estate agent after it so that you're not getting other people. Anyway, 
So these are the ways you want to be diversified or add some of these to your bag of tricks. Of course, you're going to want to be on social media sites. There are a gazillion of them. It can get overwhelming. There's Instagram. There's Pinterest. Of course, there's Facebook. There's Twitter. There's LinkedIn. There's even, you know, Reddit. There's just so many places that you can be. Um, and certainly it can be challenging to manage all of that. So you've got to make some decisions about how much of that you want to do. But if, I would say you definitely want to be on Facebook if you're looking for way and, and LinkedIn, if you're looking for one or two and you haven't done it yet. So master the art of diversification. So make sure you're on a few social media sites. And when you're there, try and do some interacting. And we're going to talk about how you interact in just a few minutes. And then blogs. Now, this is a tough one because not everyone likes to write. For those of you that know me, know that I came into real estate as a writer. I was a high school English teacher, and then I worked for um, an educational publishing company for many years, developing textbooks for high school students. So I came into real estate with a lot of background in writing. So it's been easy for me to transition that over the last five or eight, you know, seven or eight years into doing blogs and things like that. If you are not gifted in writing or that's not how you like to spend your time, you know, that might not be something that you're going to be able to do on your own. You may need to outsource that, but you definitely want to consider that as a way to build trust and generate online leads. Videos, as we talked about a few weeks ago, YouTube is number two below Google in the whole wide world as far as websites go the whole wide world. So they're the second largest search engine and the second largest URL. So Google, then YouTube, and then there's like Facebook's in the top 10 and Twitter. And then we get into some of the websites, you know, amazon.com, things like that. So you definitely want to have a few videos on YouTube because that's where people are searching. And I can tell you there's a lot less there are real estate professionals, tons and tons of them doing it, but there are a lot less real estate professionals um, doing videos than there are writing blogs. So that's a place where you might want to be. And we can talk, we can do a whole webinar talking about developing that. And then review sites, Yelp, Google Plus, um, things like that. Trulia even has recommendations and reviews. And I'm really excited because I am preparing a webinar on this. I think it will probably be our next webinar in a few weeks. But what I want to talk, what review sites are where you want to be. So if someone said to me, Melissa, what is the future trend? Where do I need to be? If I only was going to pick one thing to do when I left this webinar today to generate leads or to convert leads, I would say get over to Yelp and Google Plus and start getting reviews. Think about it. You go on Amazon or Nordstrom.com or Best Buy or wherever you go and before you buy something online, that's what you are doing. You are reading the reviews. I'm gonna be honest and tell you, I was looking at some shoes on Nordstrom about a month ago and I read every single review. Do they run ride? Do they run narrow? Are they comfortable? Are they not comfortable? And everyone was saying they're a little bit uncomfortable so then I didn't buy them. So Imagine how many reviews I looked at. So if people are reading reviews, they will be calling you. And I did share a few weeks ago that I spoke with an agent um, who from Northern California, who she and her partner did 67 million last year, the two of them with one assistant, and because they had 45 reviews in Yelp, and they're in a kind of high-end area, so each home was between one and two million, and they got all of their leads from Yelp. So if you are not looking into this as a way to generate business, you need to be. So in addition, we, we've got Zillow and Trulia and people are going to complain about them, but they're in the top 100 as far as websites in the United States. People are going there. And in a few minutes, when I talk about the anatomy of an internet lead, you will be surprised. Even though people are going there, they're still using local realtors. And I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. Craigslist. Now, Craigslist is different, not as easy to use as it was before. We've talked about that before as well, um, because you cannot add links which go directly to your website. So it's a little so you. But the good news is the people that contact you, they're going to be better qualified because they've actually picked up the phone and they've expressed interest instead of just clicking. So that's a good thing. So Craigslist is another place that you can consider if you're going to diversify your lead generation. Online forms. 
So all your websites should have online forms because that's how you're going to generate online leads, ways for people to communicate with you. Organic search. So when you Googled your name just now, that was how you showed up in the main part of page one. That's the organic search. If you're on the right hand side or on the top, that's a pay per click. So you want to make sure you're showing up in the organic organic search. And also, um, you may want to consider some pay-per-click pay campaigning for your area. Carlsbad Real Estate Professional, Palm Springs Realtor, whatever you want to use as your search terms. But pay-per-click can generate some business for you, some online traffic. And there's so many more. But anyway, these are the things that you should be working on. And these are the ways you're going to get your leads, which is your online lead generation. And that today, today we're mostly going to be talking about, once you get them, how you're going to convert them. So, but before we do that, let's talk about the anatomy of an online lead. 90% of home buyers go online during their home search. So that's 92% of all the people buying homes are going online at some point during their home search. And this is really interesting. 41% went online before they contacted an agent. 11% conducted some sort of research online related to real estate. So principally, those would be first-time home buyers at looking to learn about the process, home inspectors, appraisals, you know, all the things that they want to know to have some background about home buying. Those make up the large chunk of that 11% of people that were conducting research online. And 48% went online at some point during the process. So maybe after they already wrote an offer, they went online to look at other things. Or even after they're working with a real estate professional, they're still going online. Extremely common, as you know. They're saying, well, you didn't show me this house. And it shows on Zillow that this house is available. And so that's that other 48% that's going online at some point during the process, maybe checking up on you that you showed them everything or just because they want more information. So that makes up, those are um, the kinds of people that are looking online and it's 92% of home buyers. That's a pretty significant percentage. So certainly you want to be there so they can find you. The other thing that you need to know because you think, oh my gosh, and we did talk about this, we talked about the fact that um, Oxford University said that there's an 86% probability that a real estate professional's job could be automated at some point in the future. But isn't it interesting that 89% of home buyers who went online during the home search actually used a real estate professional in their purchase? So, despite the fact that 92% of people are shopping online, they're actually buying with local realtors. So isn't that great? So of the 100% of people that are buying, 89% are buying, uh, they're searching, not, that are searching online, 89% are buying with you. So that's great, and that's why you wanna be online. So to generate and convert those leads though, you need to show the public that you provide some value. And we did talk about that, about how you really want to think about what people want so you can provide it to them and that's really really important you have to show that you have value in this technology focused marketplace so let i was going to tell you i'll tell you about johnny bravo in a minute but so here's the so here's the lead generation and conversion process that you need to think about you're generating traffic through that diversification thing that i just showed you and through that you're going to obtain some leads and then, of course, you're going to want to convert the leads. And it goes on and on and on and on. And you're like a guy on a hamster wheel. But that's okay. The minute you stop is you're going to create those peaks and valleys in your real estate career. And we've all been there. In the peaks, you're making good money. You're super busy. The checks are coming in. And all of a sudden, you have a three-month lag with no closings. And that's because you weren't generating traffic and obtaining and converting leads because you were so focused on your current deals that you forgot that you needed to do your marketing. So that's the, the biggest challenge, I think, to seeing continuous closings in real estate is the ability to run this hamster wheel over and over and over again, despite whatever else is going on in your career. So to me, that's such a challenge. And so we need to be cre creative and really disciplined in order to not have that problem of peaks and valleys. I can tell you even the top producers 
do make the mistake sometimes of not of do, of the peaks and valleys of forgetting to do their marketing because they're so busy focusing on problems, you know, running to a home inspection or a, somebody lost a key instead of having staff do that while they're doing their lead generation. So it's really, really vital that you stay on this wheel and you continue this process. And this is what I was talking about, Johnny Bravo. So how we do that. One thing was you want to engage your leads. So you don't want to be that guy. Look at this guy. You know, best story I can think of for this is just imagine that uh, there's this guy in a bar. He's got, you know, really muscular guy in good shape. He goes up to a woman and he says, I'm in good shape. I make lots of money. I have a nice car. And, you know, so he is just telling all this stuff about him. And yes, he will maybe get one date because people might be impressed by those things. But will he get over and over dates with that kind of personality? Probably not so much. Even that woman that might have been attracted to the fact that he had money, muscles, a uh, nice car, after over time, if there's not some value there, then there's no true connection. So I would say don't be that realtor <laughs> that's that's saying those things, but think about ways that you can authentically engage leads or engage people at their own level and provide them with value. So if you think about that guy, what he should say is, oh, you know, I'm so glad to meet you and, you know, find out what you have in common and do things like that instead of just just showing off his muscles, showing off his car. You know, that's going to repel people over time. And Facebook is a great place um, to test that. Because in Facebook, you really don't want to be saying, oh, come by my houses, you know, they're so awesome all the time, all the time, real estate, real estate, real estate, because that's a social engagement site. So people are looking for value and social engagement there. So that's a perfect example of when you don't want to be Johnny Bravo. The other thing is that conversion takes time. A long time ago, I saw a story on Dateline about how to um, get children to eat healthy foods. And what they said is the only way that a child is going to eat something like spinach or broccoli or Russell sprouts is if you present it on the plate a minimum of 11 times in a row. So that means 11 times at dinner, broccoli or whatever, Brussels sprouts. Now, I would say, after I thought about it, that that really applies a lot to lead conversion. Nobody is going to eat your broccoli or eat your Brussels sprouts, which is, you know, use you as a real estate professional on the very first call or in the very first email. That conversion is going to take time, just as it really takes time for kids to eat those vegetables. And so, you know, as you work through, if you're looking at the ebook, if you've downloaded the ebook, you'll see that there's a whole process for lead conversion. It's a whole recipe, a whole bunch of templates, and it works on what you need to do the first 12 days, 12 to 15 days, and then what you need to do after that, because conversion does take a lot of time. I, as a, a, a personal example, is I can think of one person that I sent him a weekly newsletter through email. Since 2008, he was on my list. I had a little bit of engagement with him on Facebook, and I finally converted him in 2013. So it didn't cost me much to do those email campaigns, and I didn't reach out to him very often. You know, on Facebook, we had, you know, he had a baby. I clicked like or made a cute a comment, but that didn't, I didn't do that very much. But that's how much time it took me to convert that lead. I'm not suggesting that you actively call people that are not warm leads, you know, every single once a week for, for five years. In my case, I was converting him to be a client for one of my businesses, but, and it, and it was just a weekly email. So it wasn't as interactive, but the thing is, that's an example of how it works over time and how it can take time, but you've got to get under their skin. Just like that broccoli has to be on that plate so many times. So the other thing is you want to use a lead validation process. How many people have received a lead and you know it's like a fake name? You know, I've seen some that say Mickey Mouse. 
Um, you know, people or people put in a fake name. Well, you've got to be able to validate your leads. So first of all, you need to identify, do you have a valid email address? When online leads come in, and I'm going to show you one in just a second, um, you sometimes, you, you always get, it seems that you always get an email. You don't know whether it's valid or not. But you also, um, sometimes you get a phone number, and that's really great, if, especially if it's a working phone number. So you've got to kind of assess whether these things are real. Do you have a valid name? You could get an email address and no name. You don't know, if, again, if you have a valid phone number. And you might, it would be ideal to have a mailing address because then you could go and look on the MLS or in public records and see if they're a tenant at that address or an owner. So you can have more information about what their background is and what they want. So having a good uh, lead validation process is key and taking the time to do that is crucial and if you could do it at the beginning before you work on conversion it doesn't take that long but it could give you some additional information someone told me the other day about beenverified.com b-e-e-n verified.com and how you can use them to um, validate you know an address or get a phone number things like that I don't know you know how much information you need for that but that's a place to go if you're looking to do some lead validation so here's um here's a lead. This one came into our office um, several months ago. Just an example. Um, so person's name is uh, Kira or Kyra, and there was an AOL email address, and then there was a phone number. And here it looks like she went on the uh, our my brokerage is servingsandiegocounty.com is our website, and she was looking at a, a listing. You know, she was searching through the listings there, and she found a rental. And we don't really uh, work in rentals, but she found this through the MLS in her searching, and she was looking to know if it's available, I guess. And um, so it gave us some information here. So now I know immediately by looking at this that, okay, she's um, looking to rent, and this is in Vista. Now, of course, I'm thinking in my head, well, why can't she buy? Can we call her? Can we convert her into a first-time home buyer? There's so many good first-time home buyers programs. But we've got to be a good detective and find out if she's legit by looking up her um, email address and trying to call her on the phone. So you can research the lead using your IDX platform. So this is an example from the IDX platform so I can see what she looked at. If she logged in and created a contact there and she saved her search, I can see all the things she's looking at when I log into the back end. So if you use Diverse Solutions or any of these other IDX platforms on your website, they always have a control panel you can log into the back and you can see what people are looking at. If you don't have an IDX platform and are looking for something, uh, there is a really affordable alternative called RealBird, which is about $90 or $100 a year. And you can, it's, it's not as comprehensive, but definitely provides you with some search tools that you can add to your website. So that's a real cool thing. But this one, uh, Diverse Solutions, is very comprehensive. And if there were more information, or if I logged into the back end, I could see what else she searched before I even called her. Maybe I see that she's also looking in Oceanside, in which case I can, you know, I can maybe try and find her rental in Oceanside, or I can, refer, if she can't qualify to be a first time home buyer. I can also go on Google. I can put her email address into the search bar on Google. And that is a great way to find out, you know, if she's legit. I can find out, you know, if she's been somewhere else, if she's posted something on Craigslist or maybe where she works or anything like that, if she has any presence on Google. And then Facebook. I can search maybe her email in Facebook or if I had her last name, I could search on Facebook. And I'm going to talk to you about how re reaching out to people on Facebook in just a few minutes. LinkedIn. I can look for her on LinkedIn, Twitter, things like that. So Instagram. So these are ways that you can reach out to people, check them. You can actually find out that way if it's a legitimate email. It helps a lot to know that. So really, really um, important when you're doing that. So all of this stuff you can do before you actually pick up the phone or send an email to try and convert the lead. But the next thing you need to do is you need to follow a good lead conversion plan. So I don't know if you have one already, if you're using one. Uh, as I said, the ebook that for those of you that just came on the call, uh, the the address where you can download the ebook if you're interested is in the chat area. 
and that has the whole lead conversion plan for 11 days for you, 11 to 12 days, I think it is, maybe go up to 15, depending on how you space it out. But that's a whole lead conversion plan for online leads available for you. You just need to integrate it into your email platform, and there you go. So again, that's what that is, and I think everyone has it, but if otherwise you can download it right now from melissazavala.com, but those of you on the call, you have the link right there. So the templates are in this booklet, which you can download. So this is what the first day has. This is the most complicated day because you've kind of got to think through, okay, what information do I have? So if you've got the lead, the first thing is, did I get a phone number? If so, of course, you're going to try and call them. So the booklet has um, an introductory phone script if you're not sure what to say. And, um, and then, what, then number two, did they answer the phone? If so, you're going to want to engagement them. We've got a lead engagement worksheet you can download. You can fill it out. And then if they didn't answer the phone, then you can leave a voicemail. So I've got a couple of samples right, that I'm going to show you in a minute. If you had a conversation, you can send them a follow-up email. And then, of course, no phone number. You can send an introductory email greeting. So there's all sorts of things that you can do. But this one's the most complicated because it depends on the information that you got with your online lead. Now, let me be very clear. The minute you talk to them, you can abandon this lead conversion plan. So if you talk to somebody or if you set an appointment, you don't you stop doing the things here because you've already created a valuable relationship which you can move towards selling them property. So this is just the things to do over and over in order to feed them your broccoli so they start possibly taking your calls or answering your emails. So again, you can abandon all of these things the minute that you have um, you have engagement. So here's a sample day one voicemail. Hi, Bob. Again, <laughs> This is just a sample. This is Melissa and I'm responding to your message. When you have a call a minute, can you please give me a call? My phone number. Notice I did not say, this is Melissa at Keller Williams. I'm responding, <laughs> I am, I'm responding to your email about the property at 123 Sesame Street. There's a reason for that because they might be repelled and say, oh, realtor, I don't wanna call them back. But they don't remember, who's Melissa again? Maybe I did call her. And so that's the way you can get them on the phone. So be kind of, um, you know, I gave my number. I said who I was, but that piqued the interest. So hopefully that will get me the call back. So that's the sample um, day one voicemail message. Again, that's in your booklet. And then an email message. So this one, I'm going to give a little more information. Anything in italics, obviously, is specific to me, and you're going to have to change that. So thanks so much is my subject line. Hi there, Bob. My name is Melissa Zavala with Broadpoint Properties. Just a quick thanks for visiting my website. I also wanted to see if you wanted some real estate info and hot deals in Palm Springs. That's kind of a joke. For those of you in California, you know that Palm Springs is very hot. So um, if you have a minute, can you call or text me at and my phone number? You can also email me at this email address. Anyway, something like that. Just go and go and go day after day after day following the recipes in the booklet. And then hopefully you can create some engagement. So day two, all right, you've already completed the steps in the previous section and you've, you know, now you've got to do some more. So within two days or your second day or within two days, you wouldn't want to do one of these two things. You're going to send a one for you email. I've got that in the book. Or like I talked about, you're going to do some more detective work and try and reach out to the prospect via Facebook. Most of the world nowadays is on Facebook. If you've got a lead from someone through the Internet, it's likely that they're also on Facebook. You can search for them on Facebook by their email address. And here's a sample Facebook message. Hi there, Bob. I just searched my contacts on Facebook and you showed up. It looks like we both go to Gold's Gym. Again, that's an italic, so you can connect that way. So if they're in your their community and you have 500 friends on Facebook and they have 500 friends on Facebook, you might have friends in common already. Or you might be able to find some other common social ground on Facebook. So you want to maybe put in a customized sentence there with your common social ground. And then you visited my site and I thought I'd put a name to the face. I hope we can touch base soon. Let me tell you one thing about Facebook. Messages that people send in Facebook are 
I don't know the percentage, but data shows that they're significantly more likely to be responded to than emails. So if you have the opportunity to message someone over Facebook versus sending them an email, this would be a way better way to create engagement. If I've had people, people that I know professionally and they're really busy and they don't always get back to me on email. So if they're friends of mine on Facebook, I send them a quick Facebook message and they always respond usually the same day. So there you have it. If you can send a Facebook message, you likelihood that you can create engagement is going to be a lot more significant. And then the third day, or a few days after that, you know, there are some other things that you can do. You can do a video email using BombBomb, B-O-M-B-B-O-M-B.com, or other video email tools. You can send an I, I'm free email. That's a sample email that's in your booklet. And you can try to make another call and leave a message, and I have another script in there. And it goes on and on and on and on. I've got, like I said, 10 to 15 days of activities in there, and then a follow-up plan for after that. So the key to lead conversion is to do this. So if you can find time in your day to do this every day, for me, I would just so much prefer to do it at 9 a.m., be done by 9.20, and just be on with my day, and I'll feel like I've really done something to, uh, that will contribute to my success in real estate. But the, there are some tips. You've got to be timely. Time is of the essence. Look at this statistic. You're five times more likely to make contact with a lead if you respond in the first five minutes as opposed to 10 minutes. So you're five times more likely to make contact. So if you have a phone number, if you call the minute you get the email, if you call versus waiting 10 minutes, you're five times more likely to get in touch with that individual. Doesn't that sound like a motivator? In fact, Redfin, I don't know if we have any Redfin agents on the phone, but Redfin has a referral program. So for those of you on the line, you should look into it in your area. I know that it, they've got a strict application process, but it's for outs, um, agents outside of Redfin. If you're picked up by Redfin, they do this email thing where if you can convert the lead, then they, you, get, you pay them a referral at closing. And I know some people that have had some great success as not, they're not realtors for Redfin, but they've gotten on the Redfin list and they do get a few leads a month from Redfin. But Redfin is very, very strict. And if you don't respond immediately, then they're off the list. So they've obviously recognized the value of responding in the first five minutes. Look at this. A hundred times more likely to make contact in the first five minutes as opposed to 30 minutes later. So if you wait 30 minutes, and then you call, you've lost. So you're 100 times more likely to make contact in the first five minutes as opposed to 30 minutes later. That is how important it is to be all over your email all the time. Yes, I know that's hard. You're gonna turn it off at you know, a certain time in the evening and you do sometimes get those lead generation contacts at one in the morning because people are on the computer 24 seven. That's what inbound marketing is all about. But you, during the day, if you can respond in a timely manner, you can see the value in that. Plan ahead and stick to your plan. I've given you the plan. You just need to stick to it over and over and over. I've already showed you an example of how I used weekly newsletters. And it took me five years, but I planned ahead and I stuck to my plan. I was able to convert that individual. Develop a system that works for you. So this is a page, if you like hard copies of things, if you like paper, this is from the Essential Daily Planner for Real Estate Agents. And you can write down who you need to talk to every day. You can write it in. You can use an Excel spreadsheet. There are all sorts of things that you can use. You can calendar it. You can use a CRM, which we'll talk about in a minute. There are different ways that you can do it. But if you want paper, this is the Essential Daily Planner for Real Estate Agents. And you can, it's got pages for every day of the week. Um, automate when applicable. So you cannot, how many of you get these emails that are, you know, I'm on vacation until next Saturday. If you need me, please call my assistant at this phone number. You cannot use autoresponders for lead conversion. There is a place for autoresponders. Um, I mean, out of, out of office replies. There's a place for those, but it's not necessarily in lead conversion, those out of office replies. Now, there are auto times that you can use autoresponders. What autoresponders are, 
our, our pre-scheduled emails. So when you add someone to a list, they get an email maybe on the first day, the third day, the fifth day. So are the ways that you can use autoresponders if you want to send people some regular emails and you don't want to have to remember how to do that. So some companies that have autoresponders, you would have to generate your own text for those, but you can put them in are like MailChimp, Constant Contact, Eye Contact, my Emma. So these are all companies that if you're interested in doing something with regimented emails, again, adding someone to a list and then saying, send email one, two days after I add them to the list, send email two, three days after I add them to the list, something like that. You can do that um, through those companies I've mentioned. Another thing is CRMs, customer relationship management platforms. These things are great for keeping you organized. With the number, I mean, we went through that diversification list at the beginning of the webinar, and I only, I think we went through nine or 10 things on that list. If you have all that on your plate, plus you're showing property, plus you have a few listings, how can you possibly keep it all in your head? You've got to have a place to write it down, whether it's your, your iPhone calendar or Google calendar. CRMs, though, are very good because you can automate certain things to happen at certain times. You can move people from contacts to leads to prospects, things like that. So there are all sorts of customer relationship management platforms that you could explore to automate some of your activities related to lead conversion. But it's so hard to stick to the plan. We were just talking about that. So And, and even it's hard to practice. You know, some people are just in the field people and some people really are very scheduled and some people are much more flexible. The thing is to develop a technique that works for you. The Pomodoro technique is one such technique. It's named after um, an, Itali an Italian, that's the tomato timer. And it means sitting down for 25 minute burst to get stuff done. So if you could just in one 25 minute burst per day, you could do your lead conversion you will be ahead of the game. And then maybe spend another 45 minutes or so on prospecting phone calls, calling expireds, listings, people in your sphere. Just imagine how many more relationships um, you will create. So that's one such technique for time management. And then the thing that we talked about last time that a lot of people were interested in is hiring a virtual assistant. Now, their virtual assistant can't do everything for you. The most cost, of, because people say, I can't get it all done. They want someone to help them. The most cost-effective way to get that done is a virtual assistant. You can hire a local virtual assistant, someone else in the United States, or someone from overseas. You can hire them through a company like Elance, for example, or Odesk, or you can go and hire them maybe uh, through Craigslist in the Philippines. Now, virtual assistants can be overseas can be extremely affordable. So if you can't afford a local assistant and you can think of a lot of activities that you could have someone do that's not sitting next to you that they can do maybe while you're sleeping, the virtual assistant would be ideal for you. Also, if you don't like the detail work and you prefer to be in the field, this is a great way to continue being in the field and have someone doing some of this stuff, maybe creating your LinkedIn profile for you or doing some of your social media posting, or writing blog posts for your blog about local communities or things like that. Virtual assistant may be the way to go if you're not a detailed person. So that's a way to do, the, if you are resisting because you're not into technology, because you'd rather be in the field, um, here's your solution. And it's very affordable. So definitely a way to go on that. So. The question for you is what one new lead conversion thing can you implement today? I've given you a book. I've given you a worksheet. Of course, I already told you that if you're going to do one thing today, I would work on my online reviews. Again, it's the key right now. It's the way the future is going. People are really looking at reviews before they hire anybody. And that's where you really need to be. So if you can only do one thing after this call, if you're going to hang up, if you're in San Diego and you can't go too far because the fire's near your house and you need to distract yourself, this is what you need to be doing. Again, you've got the book so you can start implementing all of the kind of the recipe manual or the templates 
into your life and to, in order to do some more lead conversion, or you can start creating profiles through that diversification chart that I showed you at the beginning. There are lots of different things that you can do. Sometimes people say to me, oh, but the weather's bad, even on the East Coast. It's snowing today. Nobody wants to look at properties. Fine. That doesn't mean that you're out of business. There are lots of things that you can do seated at your computer as long as you have internet, or even if you don't, you can start working on some marketing pieces and you know, brochures, things like that, that can help you generate business in the future. So carefully consider those things in order to increase your success. Now, I've got a couple of gifts for you that I'd love for you to download, and they're both on melissazavala.com if you're interested. I've got an easy-to-use agent income calculator, so you can download that or a, a two-step daily prospect calculator. The daily prospect calculator, what that will do is it will tell you exactly how many people you need to contact every day based on the number of closings you want in a year. So if you know that you want 12 closings this year or 15 closings, it will tell you how many people you need to call or talk to every day in order to meet that goal. So for those of you that are really into numbers and crunching numbers, that will be a great way to get some information. And for those that want to figure out, you know, how many deals they need to close in order to meet their income goals, you'll want to use the agent income calculator. So both of those, if you go to melissazavala.com and you just enter in your email address, it will pop up. You have to confirm, I believe, and then you'll get a pop-up with the links to download those items. Now, I just I want to thank you for coming today. We I really just wanted to give you as a gift the lead conversion book and kind of walk you through some of the techniques in it and how you can em embrace them and begin to use them in your real estate career. And if you have any questions, I'm willing to stay on and answer those at this time. And if you if here's how you can email me or get in contact with me if you have any questions as you're reading the book. And I wish you all just a great day if again if you're in san diego and you are faced with this fire situation i just wish i hope for your safety and those of your love that of your loved ones and those around you it seems to be getting better today thankfully um but was kind of for anyone that's been watching the news it's been kind of a crazy week so thank you again for stopping at our short little webinar today and i wish you much success with real estate and if i can be of help to you in any way please do let me know thank you have a great day